up around one of these things, take a step back and ask yourself, is it really that bad? Oh yeah. Bye now. Hey, Jamie? He wants his money back, bud. We know chickens because we are chickens. Also ducks. I don't know if this comes across in video or not, but every single thing I want to do involves like a thousand different steps. For example, today I'm trading a set of disc brakes and cash for a duster. A set of disc brakes, which is currently installed on the garbage can Cuda here. Why am I tearing off a perfectly good set of disc brakes? I don't know either. Then of course I need Barracuda number three off of the car trailer, which means I need a parking spot for that. Rather inconveniently, there's kind of a scungy Taurus where I was gonna put it, so that's where we're at. I'd like to leave the garbage can in a movable state when I'm done, which would mean installing these drum brake spindles. Fortunately, they're missing the castle nuts. I don't even know what other kind of internal components. Oh, and they have no ball joints. I can hardly even reach those drum brake assemblies because there's a mountain of parts and projects in the way. Yeah. If you ever find yourself wondering why it takes a while to get updates on my projects here, yeah, this is why. But hey, at least I still have a burrito. That's the good news. Of course, it's raining again, and all of the things I just said have to happen outside, so yay. <laughs> I forgot about YouTube again. Anyway, there's a duster on the trailer now. Well, it probably isn't so good. Alternator's not really alternating anymore. Grid heaters are out of commission too. Well, could have been a bigger fire. Yep, it's a duster. Oh, it's a challenge. Hmm. Giant castle playground. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Well, start planning the intervention now, I guess. Okay, really, I bought this car for two reasons. One, I like fun. And two, I really didn't want to see it become a parts car. See, there's a set of disc brakes back there, and that's really all the seller needed from this thing. He was gonna part it out just to get those, so I went ahead and solved that problem for him. I solved that problem by robbing the perfectly good disc brakes off of the garbage can Cuda and installing these small bolt drums. The center lines actually look pretty good. Kind of need to deal with the rear end still, but that's another story. Up until a couple weeks ago, this was a complete car. He had actually pulled the nose off, but he set it back on there for me. Trunk lid too. And everything that's missing from the outside is inside the car. I can't stress enough how cool the seller of this car was. Not only did he put all the parts he had removed back on, he also helped me when the truck broke down by bringing me vice grips and electrical connectors. So thank you very much to Will. Surprise, surprise. It's a slant six. According to this license plate, this car has been parked since the year 2000 or so. That's quite a while. Also, moose. Someone was trying to turn this into a driver and threw some used truck tires on the back. And whatever these are on the front. This car was extremely affordable. And one look in this region will quickly tell you why. Because it was originally a vinyl top car, the roof and window channels are not doing too hot, but the rest of it's kinda okay. Hey, I said kinda, all right? Here in the engine compartment, things are interesting because clearly attempts were made to get this thing running again. There's a brand new remanufactured carburetor. But there's also an electric fuel pump. There's also this for some reason. Okay. This was an original air conditioning car, but surprise, surprise, all that stuff's been deleted. It also had some wacky aftermarket cruise control system. So there are remnants of that all over the place. Speedometer definitely doesn't work. And there are just vacuum hoses everywhere. 
There's a bit of an interesting story on this car. It was for sale on the Facetube marketplace for a couple months. It kept getting cheaper, but not selling. It was in my saved listings collection for quite some time. And of course, I gotta be honest, with the black wheels and from the right angles, it looked a lot better than it is. That original ad indicated that it had been running recently, but it quit running. It would just crank. And the seller at that time believed it needed a starter relay. Mm -hmm. Judging by what's going on here, there were fuel system issues. That's not too surprising. What was surprising was this, a complete lack of fuel tank. And apparently there was a fuel cell in the trunk, but uh, well, someone down the line kept it, which is highly inconvenient. I don't really have half a clue what's going on here or what the problem is. But I do know that this is a slant six and when the oil looks like that and the coolant's completely full and green, well, it's gonna be a runner. Huh, apparently the key's on. There's a little bit of fuel left in there. Okay. This is what happens when we assume things. The fuel pump's on a toggle switch. The toggle switch is on, and did I mention that they tried removing the steering column? So yeah, no ignition. Oh yeah, did I mention he sold me a nice set of rally wheels for really cheap? That's right, bonus. Did I mention this car has original black interior and some of it's kind of okay, but not all of it. Anyway, this does stuff now, but as I suspected, no crank. Well, what do you like now? Okay. Huh. All right then. Why is the fuel filter installed backwards? Why is the fuel filter installed right next to the exhaust manifold? Oh, I have so many questions, but uh, yeah, it's a runner. Oh yeah, that's not great. So the engine does that thing it's supposed to do and the brake pedal does something. Although guessing by this, there was a bit of an issue there. Anyway, something tells me this is a driver, but uh, kind of need to reinstall the column first because they're sort of hard to steer that way. I found the column plate, but all the hardware's missing. So that's cool. I don't really want to look at any of this. I just learned that a previous owner cut the seat belts, you know, instead of pulling the retractors. There's some weird things going on here. Like the back panels are just ruined. And the headliner's gone. So are the visors. Ah, that's fine. The price was right. This nifty control I've never seen before is for the factory rear defrost. Unfortunately, they broke the bezel pulling it out for probably no reason at all. All the hardware for the fender that was recently removed is here, but nothing for the column. Hoarding saves the day again. Well, this is interesting. Now we have a column and we have this, which is very strange because the starter works fine if you jump it out there. The column's attached to the car again, but there are some more little issues. This, this isn't great. And uh, that's the adjustment not missing. <laughs> oh, this problem actually goes deeper than I thought. Why is the whole gearbox loose? Mm-hmm. Normal. Sad dog is sad. The trunk key is essential equipment for any Mopar owner. Ugh, dang it. I forgot the duster needs one of those long reach ones. That's more like it. Oh yeah. Oh, come on. Good. More wheels. See, what did I tell you? He even came with one. Nice. All right, 30 inch might be a little big for the Cuda, but 28, that's about right. Oh, look, a gas tank. Oh, you can't make this up. It fits perfectly. I actually got this boat tank from an estate sale not too long ago. There were so many there, they were practically giving them away as door prizes. I'm gonna reconfigure this fuel line setup slightly. 
for one thing, I don't think a dipstick tube is really what we want here. And for another, I don't really think fuel lines should be caught up in the suspension. And they have it strapped to the axle, so... Yeah, is that just me? I don't know. Oh, bees, my favorite. Normally I wouldn't bother with the hold down bracket, but it was included with the purchase. Yes. Maybe. Now it's a party. Huh, magically fixed. Okay, come on, you can do it. Maybe you can't do it. tightening the alternator belt. That's much improved. I even moved the overflow tank out of the way too. Just the little things. All right, gearbox is vaguely attached to the K-frame now. Two out of three bolts, that's pretty good. Uh, the column arrangement here is still very wrong, but I'm thinking that's gonna be a future Jamie problem. I connected the power steering lines and I think I'll add some magic juice. I think a younger gentleman must've messed this car up pretty serious. Well, I wanna be annoyed about that. Well, I do remember being young and stupid. You gotta start somewhere. Well, so much for that. You know, working on a car in Grace Harbor is about 25% working on the car and 75% waiting for brakes in the rain and hail. Today does something. Admire the stance on this unit. Probably should air up the front tires, that would help. That tire. Oh man. Alright. Let me just spoil the surprise for you. All that work I did to make the power steering operational did not pay off. It is impossible to steer this thing. Also, I think the booster's bad and the brake pedal sticks to the floor. So that explains the bungee. Well, it's been running for like 15 minutes and I only just noticed it's not charging. Maybe anyway, it's fine. The other gauges don't work either. Shocking, I know. Well, this might help the steering a little. Great. I fooled around and fell in love. I have to wash the damn thing. Yeah. Paired up the tires, got it looking all good. <sighs> okay. It's so beefy. Doesn't even have shackles. Okay. Battery number two. If you've watched my Chrysler charging system video, you know that pretty much all charging system problems stem from this little voltage regulator here. And it's probably bad, but before I replace it, try and reef these bolts down, see if maybe it's a bad ground, because that does happen. And it looks all rusty and awful. Okay, battery number three then. Well, that's more like it. Huh. Oh yeah. No luck 
here unfortunately, so needs a regulator. Uh, I think that's a good one. Hey, I've got steering column bolts in there too. Hmm, I'm gonna need those later. If the back of your spare regulator looks like this, the odds are not really in your favor, but let's see what we get. Ah, oh, well, at least we tried. Well, airing up the tires and loosening the sector shaft adjustment helped about 3%. It's really bad. Just look at it though. Totally worth all the misery. And look, it's winking. That doesn't look very good. Wow, parking lights. Why can't I ever have a muffler on one of these things? Could be worse. Could be a Honda. Man, that is some resilient scunge. Stuff on the top might be vinyl top adhesive? Not totally sure. It's kind of coming off of the lower body. Kinda. Well, there's a slight improvement. Just a bit of a difference. My very first Mopar that was drivable. 74 Duster, almost just like this one. Slant six, automatic, disc brakes, rust in the roof from a vinyl top. It was maroon, not this horrible green, gold, brown color, but otherwise, very similar. In spite of that, the 74 Duster is not exactly my dream car. I don't even want this thing. What I'm engaged in here is something Ranch Tom calls saving a life. You see, I feel similarly about these cars that some people feel about pets. Sports teams, you know? And even if this thing is more than a little rough, I just hate to see it taken apart. This is a very savable car with some work. So, I'm gonna get it together and operable to the best of my abilities and the best that my time allows. And send it off to the next guy. So hopefully we'll be able to see the tremendous potential now that I've got it running and moving and taking a layer of scunge off. This is the good side. Much less scunge and no broken window. See, the more time passes, the less any duster that's this decent looks like a parts car. And the harder it is to get an earlier, more desirable body style, much like the F-Body, the better these later cars are looking. So that's my homework for all you collectors out there. Before you give a car like this the full Sawzall treatment, take a step back and ask yourself, is it really that bad? Is it really beyond saving? If, like this car, it still has floors and frame rails, you know, for the most part, the answer is probably not what you think. Any late model six cylinder car or slightly crusty car is looking like a restoration candidate these days. So let's try and keep them around. And that's all I have to say about that. Eh, it only leaks inside a little bit. Did I mention that the seat's like pretty nice? Parts car. I may do more on this car as I try and get the power steering to work and maybe I could have brake lights and drive it down a road. That's a nice thought. In any case, thank you very much for watching, and party on, just not with a sawzall.